I, I, I can't talk, ladies and gentlemen. On his just leg down, massive smoking wrecking. Uh, and everybody can't hardly breathe and talk and scream and lady. I, I, I'm sorry. Honestly, I, I can hardly breathe. I, I'm going to step inside while I cannot see it. Charlie, that's terrible. Uh, I can't. I, listen, folks, I, I'm going to have to stop for a minute because they, I've lost the voice. This is the worst thing I've ever witnessed. Have you heard the awful news? <laughs> I can't believe it. DC Comics, they're going to close down. They're closing for business. Have you heard it, guys? Can you believe this? No more DC Comics. No more Batman. No more Superman. I, don't, I can't even process this. How is it possible? Let's get some context. But first, there are a few ways to support actual context and the content. To help keep this content coming, getting better, and seen by more eyes, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. I know times are tough for a lot of people, so if you like the content and can't support it financially, the best way to show that you support it is to make sure that you're subscribed, tickle the little like button on this video, and share it to friends. Alright, so all you Bat fans, Super Stans, Wonder Woman, Speedsters, and Emerald Knights, should you be freaking out right now? Are DC Comics about to go way up in value due to the printers being mothballed? Well, let's look at where the rumors are coming from. First of all, the firing of longtime DC head Dan DiDio this week was indeed a shock to everyone interested, myself included. But DiDio has been treading on thin ice for a long time from what I can tell, with a lot of DC's more recent failures, most notably the New 52, being his executive editorial mandate. His history of making risky moves that piss fans off and don't really pay off, pretty well documented. But the firing, by all legitimate accounts, seems to be based on his interpersonal management style, more than his editorial choices. This event created fertile ground for hack fan sites to speculate that DC is being bought by Marvel and other silly claims with zero merit or supporting evidence. The alleged news of DC's end was reported by Cosmic Book News, a fan website with a regressive anti-fan bent. Cosmic Book News is borderline fashy, and they make their bacon by lying, pushing the woke agenda myth, and targeted harassment against critics of Comicsgate or anyone they consider an SJW. The site's owner, Matt McGloin, is a known egotist with delusions of grandeur, as seen when he not only doxed Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn and sent his site's followers on a harassment campaign against him, but then proclaimed that his little hack fan site is responsible for the success of the Guardians films. Sorry, sorry, not the success, but the very creation of the Guardians of the Galaxy films. According to this dude, all due to him. So right off the bat, we know Cosmic Book News is a hack fraud moron who sees himself as way more relevant and powerful than he is. For this guy to somehow believe that he has anything to do with the success of the franchise that Disney wisely adapted into film format dismisses the brilliant work done by Dan Abnett, Andy Lanning, Kevin Feige, James Gunn, and anyone who actually put work into seeing that risky vision come to life and become a worldwide blockbuster. The story of DC Comics' demise was then picked up by an even smaller, even more absurd website called Bounding Into Comics, which along with their comic and film news it distorts with toxicity and anti-fandom agendas, also covers things like former YouTuber and current Nazi and Catboy fetishist Nick Fuentes. Why are they covering him? I don't know, free speech, I guess. Bounding into comics has also covered notorious anti-fandom campaigns like the Tardigrade lawsuit against CBS and Star Trek, and the ongoing lawsuit by infamous dickhead Richard Meyer against legendary comic writer Mark Wade. Both of those examples, when you dig down into them, are clearly attempts by toxic fans to own the SJWs and rewrite history as to what comic books and Trek are, have always been, about. Just like any fascist government, the goal of these fashy little websites and figures is to distort history, remove context, and create their ideal version of a concept. Whether it's saying patriotism somehow means hating Muslims and Hispanic people, 
or just that comics and Star Trek are somehow not about fighting for social justice and progressing humanity away from its darker urges. The comments on the articles of Bounding into Comics reveal the mentally unstable and delusional nature of the type of fan that they cater to. Or, I should say, type of anti-fan. Along with those two websites, another one of the first sites to come up when you Google this is We Got This Covered, which is just another of these ubiquitous websites that you'll see all over Facebook if for some reason you still use that garbage platform. These three sites, in particular, pepper their comics news with alt-right and anti-fandom talking points about SJWs, wokeness, etc. Websites like these often just snag the most sensational rumor and shit posts from Reddit or even just Twitter, and write entire articles about it as if they have some insider source. This is no different from Doomcock using an anonymous 4chan post, which if you watched that video last week, turned out to be kind of a bad idea for the son of Doomchud. It's the internet, comic book, video game, movie version of the National Enquirer, where they prey on people's tendency to only read a headline and run with that as an absolute certainty. Look, I used to write for a fan site that was better in content, but still a pretty similar, cheap fan site designed to appear like we were some real journalistic outlet. This was back in my early days of being a writer. I've moved on since then. But those sites have no ethics, and in fact often intentionally push outrage and sensationalism just for page views. Social media is ripe for this kind of trash, because it's all made to achieve maximum shock and minimal questioning of the source. And the reason I quit the site that I worked four years ago was because my editor wanted to compete with those kinds of websites, and he was urging me to up the outrage, so I quit. But in this case, the DC Comics closing down rumor comes from one very specific and insidious source. One which does deceptively have actual ties to the comic industry, though not in the way that his sycophants like to believe. This rumor about DC Comics publishing arm closing down if their 5G event this year is unsuccessful comes like many fictional narratives before it from disgraced DC artist and comics gate figurehead Ethan Van Skyver. I met Ethan in 2007 at a convention, and back then I was a huge fan of his work. He's responsible for iconic art from legendary runs on Green Lantern and The Flash. Between his and Ivan Rice's work, the stories by writer Jeff Johns will forever remain classics. Nothing he says will ever change the skill that he possesses. But in the personality department, EVS could not have morphed into a bigger piece of shit. And there are far less abusive and toxic creators with just as much, if not more, talent to look up to. I mentioned them in the Watchmen video, which was sort of a prototype for what would become this show, Forced Adversity. But this guy is truly bonkers, to put it medically. He spent months saying Captain Marvel would flop, like they all did, only to lose his f***ing mind when it made a billion dollars and was critically well received. There is documented history of Ethan Van Skyver establishing parasocial relationships with his fans and then disowning them and accusing them of being harassers when the fan becomes inconvenient or he had a mood swing or something. This is why creators with a fan base should not have close personal friendships with fans. But there's more. EVS released a book of his art called My Struggle, which when translated to German, well, you get it. But it's just a joke, guys. It's just a joke. It's, it's just a joke. Has nothing to do with that historical monster he and his people will say. Despite the fact that he uses language like degenerate to describe gay people and other lifestyles that he disapproves of. Despite his admitted love of Trump. Despite his making fun of suicide and telling a fan to kill himself, despite a long history of just disgusting inflammatory comments about race and gender and, and anything, the kind of comments, the kind of content that attracts the lowest common denominator chuds to rally around and attack his critics. Yeah, and there's lots of documentation of that too. There's enough content that exists to show that if Ethan Van Skyver isn't a straight up nazi, he's a hateful, abusive piece of shit who has latched firmly onto the anti-SJW cult mentality. 
and made himself somewhat of a leader within that. Ethan Van Skyver has waged targeted harassment campaigns against not only the evil boogeyman SJWs, but against his own fans who don't 100% agree and line up with his bigotry and smears. But as we see time and time again, reactionaries like him always project their insanity onto others. He's had public beef with former co-workers, many of whom have denounced him and the idiotic Comicsgate banner, such as Gail Simone. Simone gave us a peek into EVS's troubled mind with a long Facebook post after EVS attacked her, revealing that Van Skyver had suffered through some mental health issues prior to his dramatic change in social behavior. This, combined with the fact that he was raised in the Mormon church, give us some insight into his warped perspective. I mean, I'm not saying everybody with mental health problems or who's raised in a cult is doomed to be delusional garbage person, but it would appear that Ethan Van Skyver never really processed these things in a healthy way. In fact, he leaned into mental illness, delusion, and cult mentality. Ethan Van Skyver chose to let the most destructive and antisocial elements of his personal life determine who he is socially and professionally. Van Skyver was let go from DC Comics in 2018. The public statement declared that it was an amicable thing and that Van Skyver just wants to get rich with independent comics. He's still trying to get rich and will be trying for a long time if the best thing that he can come up with is his overpriced relic of the early 90s called Cyberfrog. Jesus, and his art has actually gotten worse. I, I, I didn't want to assume that his art deteriorated with uh, his personality, but, but it's my suspicion, and unlike those websites, I'll always say when I'm speculating, but it's my suspicion that EVS was let go under amicable terms publicly, while other considerations were made behind the scenes. He had become a toxic, even radioactive person for DC to hire for their art, with several fan boycotts arising around his abusive and hateful rhetoric. But even before he was let go, he had fallen from the height of superstar artist on top tier titles to being relegated to things like Plastic Man. And I mean, look, I'm not talking trash on Plastic Man, but the character isn't popular outside of hardcore DC fans. It just seems odd that you can basically follow the timeline of the more abusive and hateful that he got online, the less and less prominent work he got. Those three websites that I mentioned all proudly declare Ethan Van Skyver as their source or insider source, which has the implication that he's like whispering trade secrets into their ears. But the fact is, he has a YouTube channel which markets him as a master of industry gossip called Comic Artist Pro Secrets. He'll say some crazy, deranged nonsense and these websites probably have notifications on for his channel so they can boost their numbers as soon as he says anything. From my perspective, it would appear that when he realized he'd burned his career as a pro artist with his divisive and abusive rhetoric, he pivoted to two alternative forms of income. One is by crowdfunding his kinda lame looking cyber frog, which he then sells for an absurd price and it's gotten terrible reviews. Number two is by leveraging his former pro career into that of an industry insider, despite the fact that I really don't think that he talks to anybody that knows anything. His brand is built on outrage and stirring up the anger of his white guy fans. He creates parasocial relationships and uses his followers for profit. Everything he is these days is designed to be the industry figurehead of Comicsgate. He's a hollow, mentally deranged hate monger who only serves to perpetuate lies about the industry disguised as pro-secrets. He's a cancer on the industry and in fandom in general. He makes non-stop content that revels in the failures of comics and sci-fi. Like think about that, what kind of fan celebrates failures of things that they allegedly love just non-stop? Whether he's making it up or it's based in reality, he just loves talking shit and reveling, celebrating in not even failures, but when things just don't quite live up to their potential. I mean, he's buddies with the quartering and he's made 22 videos about Rose Tico from The Last Jedi for fuck's sake. It's pretty obvious he's a grifter, albeit one with enough industry clout to easily sucker upset comic marks. So, the big question, is DC Comics closing down if their 5G reboot isn't successful later this year? No. No, it's not. 
This is all based around the long-running myth that the comics industry is on life support and is dying, which has been repeated for a decade or more. But this is disinformation, just repeated by guys like EVS who use it to lure angry men to his content to support his independent work and believe he is giving them the play-by-play -play in real time as the comic industry collapses and dies in an ash heap due to SJW degenerates and other such nonsense. And as I said in the Doom Dong video, the most important element of the anti-fan grift is to claim that the property or industry is on the decline and that everyone hates it, and that no one enjoys what they're currently putting out. This is of course empirically untrue, but these guys need to make it appear true so that they can siphon off money from bitter fans while creating more bitter fans to profit from. Yes, the comics industry has had some ups and downs, most notably, the market bust in the 90s. But as for currently, more recently, let's get some numerical context. In 1997, the estimated size of the market was 300 to 320 million. Today, it's 780 million. And that doesn't even count digital sales, which are on the rise, which is four times what the comic industry was making almost 20 years ago. Some of that is certainly due to inflation, but inflation doesn't account for a quadruple jump in market share. Not only are comic books not dying, they are thriving. Yes, single issues sold of printed comics has decreased by 20% over the last 20 years. But comic book companies have tripled their market size through trade paperback sales, digital sales, and of course, increased prices. But the thing that none of this takes into account, the thing that makes it certain that comic books are not, you know, DC's not going to be shutting down this year, okay? Like, that's not on the horizon, that's not even a, a realistic possibility, and here's why. Comic books are a highly prized, cheap method of content creation that movies, video game industries, and others keep alive with licensing deals. So as long as billion dollar movies like Avengers and Captain Marvel are being made, as long as streaming platforms are being launched with comic book heroes as the major draw, comics will exist as a proving ground for characters and stories. The comics industry is inherently tied to the film industry now. So the fact is, comics are gonna be around for quite a while longer. That includes DC. So keep this in mind the next time you see an article from Bounding Into Comics, Cosmic Book News, We Got This Covered, or anything sourced as Ethan Van Skyver. If you want to look into the details of those liars' hateful and sensationalist past, the links are in the description. But now, if you want to win this awesome sketchbook autographed by the wonderfully talented David Finch, I'll tell you how to do it. David Finch is a highly revered artist who's worked on iconic runs of the Avengers, Batman, Spider-Man, Moon Knight, Cyber Force. He's been around, and his work is top tier. So to win this book, signed by the man himself, tweet this video and tag me at Context Pat. I'll then use a random number generator to pick who gets this beautiful collection of his best Batman art. That's it. Tweet the video. Tag me, and after 24 hours or so, I'll count them all up and randomly pick a winner. Peace, love, context.